So in this section of the notes, we're going to look at what happens to a Markov chain in the long run as the time n tends to infinity. So if we think about the probability that we're in a certain state at time n, one thing that perhaps might happen is that n tends to, as n tends to infinity, the probability that we're in a certain state j might tend to some value, as in we get to see some sort of long-term evening out of behaviour. It might also be the case that this uh, limit of the probability we're in a certain state j might not depend on where we started, because we've talked about how Markov chains have this sort of memoryless property. So perhaps the Markov chain might forget where we started. So it could be the case that there's some distribution such that we tend towards that distribution as n tends to infinity, and that that distribution doesn't depend on where we started from. So just in case something like that does exist, let's write it down as a definition before investigating it further. So here is that definition of an equilibrium distribution. Note that we're asking it's a distribution, as in all the elements are bigger than zero and it adds up to one, so it's a proper probability distribution. And then we're saying that whatever the initial condition, as in no matter where we start from, and we're allowed to start from a random position, it doesn't have to be a deterministic position, we have this, the probability that we're in a given state j is tending to the value of pj. So if such a thing should happen, that this exists, then we call it an equilibrium distribution. So obviously there can't be multiple equilibrium distributions, right? Because we're saying it's for whatever the initial distribution. So there is at most one equilibrium distribution you can't have something tending towards two different things. But is there going to be an equilibrium distribution at all? Well, the answer to that is given by the limit theorem, which is the next theorem and is the most important theorem in this course. So let's look at the first part of it. It says that Xm be irreducible and aperiodic. And for any initial distribution, we have this limiting behavior where mu is the expected return time. So we have that limiting behaviour where mu j is this expected return time that we did in one of the previous sections. And so we have two different cases here, right? Because if we're positive recurrent, then the expected return time is positive, whereas if we're null recurrent or transient, then the expected return time is, zit is infinite. And so in particular, if xn is positive recurrent, then we saw last time that 1 over mu j, the reciprocal of the expected return time, is the unique stationary distribution, which exists for irreducible positive recurrent Markov chains. And so we have that as an equilibrium distribution. So the stationary distribution kind of attracts all the other distributions in towards it. And so no matter where you start, you end up getting closer and closer to the stationary distribution. On the other hand, if you're null recurrent or transient, then we know that mu j uh, equals infinity. And so uh, 1 over mu j equals 0. And so we have this, that as time goes on, you're less and less likely to be in that state, perhaps because you leave that area of the Markov chain, or perhaps because you get spread out over infinitely many states. So it's the first bullet point of these that's kind of the important one, which is the one where there does exist an equilibrium distribution. And note that there's three conditions here. Irreducible, aperiodic, which means having period one, as you'll remember, and positive recurrent. If you're irreducible, aperiodic, and positive recurrent, then, a station, then an equilibrium distribution exists and is equal to the unique stationary distribution. Something I like a lot about this theorem, and this theorem is the intellectual high point of the course, is how it kind of puts together everything we've done in this course so far. Right? We started by defining Markov chains, 
Then we defined class structure, which allowed us to say what irreducible means. Then we defined periods, which allowed us to say what periods are. Uh, then we talked about hitting times and hitting probabilities, which allows us to talk about return times and return probabilities. Uh, the expected return time comes in there. Uh, the expected return probabilities allowed us to tell the difference between recurrent and transient. The expected return times allowed us to tell the difference between positive and non-recurrent. Then we talked about stationary distributions. Then we talked about whether stationary distributions are unique or not. And so all the things we've learned in the whole course up to this date are all put in this theorem. So this is why this theorem is um, worthy of admiration. OK, now let's think a bit more about this theorem. So this is for any initial distribution. So we could have initial distribution being I start from I. So if initial distribution is start from I with certainty, as in with probability 1, then what this statement up here is saying is that it's saying that P I J N tends to well let's use it in the format of down here, shall we? It tends to mu j. So this is if we are irreducible aperiodic irreducible aperiodic and positive recurrent, then we have this that P I J N tends towards pi j. So if we think of that in terms of the n-step transition matrix, Pn, which of course we know is p to the n, that means that p11 is going to tend to pi1, and p12n is going to tend to pi2, p13n, and so on. Uh, let's say there are capital N states here. But the same is true for if we start from state 2, right, it will go to pi1, pi2, dot, dot, dot. N. And the same is true if we start from state capital N, right? It goes to pi 1, pi 2. Dun, dun. So we end up with uh, this n-step transition probability uh, having all rows equal to the stationary distribution. So although you know this is a course about Markov chains, we've learned something here about taking powers of large matrices whose rows add up to 1. Just kind of a linear algebra fact. So the full proof of the limit theorem here is, is quite complicated. I've given it in a non-examinable section because you know, it seems a shame to deny you the joy of seeing a proof of such a wonderful theorem. Uh, but I, I haven't made it mandatory because it's, it's quite technical and quite long. However, if there's a kind of short version of it we can do, which gets us part way there which is that uh, if an equilibrium distribution does exist, then we can say something about it. So if an equilibrium distribution P star does exist, then it's a stationary distribution. So note that that's kind of part way towards the limit theorem. Because up here in the first bullet point, we said that if xn is positive recurrent, which is the case where the equilibrium distribution exists, then it's equal to the stationary distribution. So this theorem is like a, a mini version of the limit theorem. So we can at least do that. Well, so to show something stationary, we need to show it satisfies... Well, it's normally pi p equals pi, isn't it? This time it's p star p equals p. So to show something is a stationary distribution, we need to show that if you multiply it on the right by the transition matrix p, then you get back itself. That's the definition of a stationary distribution. Well, so let's do that. Um, we'll write it out in coordinate form. So p star p in coordinate form is uh, p star i p i j. Uh, and that's going to be summed over i. Uh, well, no, we better use the definition of uh, p star being an equilibrium distribution here, haven't we? Uh, 
So one of the things we just said about it is it's the limit as n tends to infinity of p something i n. Uh, let's call the start state uh, k as a letter we haven't used yet, isn't it? Uh, okay, well, we've got a nice pleasant sum on the outside, and we've got a kind of yucky limit on the inside, so uh, let's swap those over. Uh, strictly speaking, uh, you're only allowed to automatically swap those over uh, when you when the state space is finite, when it's a finite sum. Uh, it is true otherwise, but you have to be careful to check it's true if you have an infinite state space, and we're not going to bother with that here. Okay, but what have we got inside the sum here? We've got another one of our, well, one way to see it is it's a make vector matrix multiplication, right? And the other way to see it is we've got a kind of chapman kolmogorov thing going on here, haven't we? We've got k to i in n steps and then i to j. So if we go k to i in n steps and then i to j, we've gone from k to j in n plus 1 steps and we're summing over all the intermediate steps i, so that's just pkj n plus 1. Oh, but sticking in an n plus 1 in there instead of an n makes no difference. You know, if we're taking a limit of n tends to infinity, infinity plus 1 is still infinity. So that's, uh, what's the probability we're in j? A very long time plus 1 in the future, right? So that's still our equilibrium distribution, pj star. And so we've shown that uh, p star p equals p star, just like we wanted to. And so we've proved the mini version of the limit there and there. Okay, in the next subsection in 11.2, just got a bunch of uh, examples. I think there are five examples in the next subsection of places where you can or can't use the limit theorem. And so I think you can read through those examples yourself next.